The translation of the book proceeds way too slow for my tastes. He always used to progress quite quickly, my old friend Gunther. Now I sit around having to wait for the results when I can already see that what I've gotten is most tempting. I want to understand more of this. And here we are instead, going to the west coast and this grave. The strange grave where it all started. I really hope that this will bring some peace to Elise and that we can move on afterwards. Maybe Anna as well. I have to admit the fauna here is very strange. These beetles, what has called them here? Who, who could have brought them? And what is this Norwegian connection? Does it have something to do with Popov? I suppose we shall have to visit the village as well, though I fear that the people there will be very unwelcoming. But there's nothing to it. We'll do it and we will be out of here. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. Christina looks at you. Are you are you okay? Uh, yes, no, oh, oh, has something has I look at my hand. And there is some kind of black substance there. And you see that there's black substance coming out of the, the floor tiles here as well. It's as if some kind of black liquid is coming out of, of the ground there. You must have... Maybe when you were getting down here, you, you got some of it on your hand? Because it, it can't be from the insect. Uh, no, of course not. No, uh, it's all right. I think there was just something down here, like a spider or something. Oh, bloody insect. Uh, has anyone got any more light? Yes, I hanged over a lantern to you. I say, old man, I, I apologize. Did, did, you didn't hear there was some sort of beeping sound. Did none of you hear that? Like a radio or something? Mm. No, no, you didn't hear anything, young. No, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure I did. Where, where did it come from? It was coming from this chamber. Near the, I point towards the grave. Um, I look down and I see the shadows moving a bit strangely there as the lantern is flickering. I look over to Elise. Does this... Well, Elise, uh, does this... Anything seem familiar to you? She's looking around. Oh, I can't say it. it is. Hey, you should check this out. And she's pointing. She's, she has her hand on one of the standing uh, stones. Come. Mm -hmm. Yes. I say and I walk over. And she takes your hand and she puts your hand on the stone. It's cold to the touch. Very cold. Hmm. It should be warm. It's in the sun. This is interesting. Come, come, feel, feel this. I see, uh, say to Anna, and I see uh, George fumbling about, trying to find his lighter again. And Anna puts her hand on there as well. Yeah, this is not how it was back then. You can see how the, the, the stone, it, it's glistening a bit in the sun, as if there were small strands of metal inside of it. Mm, look at that. Look at that. Uh, that shine to it, I say. It's beautiful. I wonder what it is. It, I'm not aware of any kind of rock that, that glistens like this. I try rubbing it with my sleeve. Well, you can't uncover anything more than the the small strands of what you think is metal that, that you can see from the, the surface there. But uh, there's something special about this this rock. That's, that's definitely true. I mean, we know that th there was trade, right? Going from the Mediterranean. Maybe it's some kind of some kind of uh, rock that they brought with them, something we're not used to seeing here. I'm not really all that familiar with, with geology, to be honest. I haven't joined the others. If anything, I just got a bit impatient and not focusing anymore on all the weird designs I was apparently fascinated with. I, I, I just want to find where this beeping noise is. There must be something, and I'm just sort of searching around everywhere for a device or a radio or anything like that. Yes, but there isn't one. There isn't one. 
Yes, yes, eventually I join the others as they're finishing the conversation, just looking a bit irritated, a bit annoyed with myself. And, and we're in a sort of a field trip kind of mood, looking at things curiously and not uh, just enjoying it. It's become quite relaxed, and I, I like how Anna and Elise both seem to be in a good mood. Uh, so I'm, I'm, yeah, a bit laid back right now. Christina comes up to uh, to to you, um, Crane. Hey, hey, why don't you pose in front of this rock here, uh, and, and you can like point to it, and I'll take a picture of you. Oh, I suppose that would be rather fun. I kind of smile a little. Her uh, company, at least, is pleasant, and I kind of try and forget about the bite on my hand, and I go to one of the stones, and I'll pull a pose. And you do that, and, and you get a, a picture of you standing in front of one of these. One of these standing stones. And time passes there as you have your little your little field trip at the at the old grave and and it is starting to get a little bit uh, late. You, you need to if you're gonna manage to to see Elise's old home, you'd better start to get moving soon if you want to be able to leave here before darkness falls. Um, maybe we should go. Uh, I I really want to see my my family's home. Elise says. Oh. Of course, Elise, I think we've found everything we're going to find here. It's not being completely a waste of time, and uh, it's quite interesting. Although, I suppose, it's as you said, Miss Anna, nothing really left here beyond what's visible, anyway. I'm afraid not. I, I'd hoped that something would, would have been uncovered by winds and rain and all that. There would have been something that we would have missed, but it seems like... We haven't missed anything, and if we had, then, well, whoever was here recently must have taken it. It's a pity. Well. It's, it's strange, I think. Uh, it, well, someone came here, and I uh, point towards the packet of cigarettes. And, uh. And I wonder about the fauna, though. The strange wildlife, I say as I look at the bugs. They don't usually bite people and uh, have these strange colors. Well, maybe it's something to do with the... What, you were talking about quartz or something? I don't know. Quartz. Local was... wildlife. Uh, I don't know. Isn't there something I read a paper once about? If you introduce something to a different environment, it changes the environment? No? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Do you do you suggest that someone took a whole exhibition of bugs and brought them here as well from, from an exotic country? Well, you never know. Maybe the artifacts, after all, from somewhere else. Maybe there was something in them, or old eggs or something. I don't know, old man. Anyway, come, let's go to the manor. As uh, Elise is saying, you know, we don't have much time. <laughs> old eggs, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, the house is a bit into the woods. Here the trees are normal. It's a simple farmhouse. The roof is caved in and everything is worn down by the elements. The garden... What used to be a garden is completely overgrown. And Elise points to it and says, ah, I remember playing here when I was small. And you can see fruit trees that have grown very big and thick in the remains of what must once have been um, a small kitchen garden. And uh, the house is still there and the, the door is sort of hanging open and Elise starts to lead you towards the entrance and she pops inside. What do you do? I nod encouragingly towards Anna and follow. Yes, and Anna seems uh, very pleased. She's walking next to you, Jung, and she takes your hand, you know, when, when no one else is looking. Hmm. And I let her lean into me a little bit and uh, enjoy her company. You do. Inside the house, everything is destroyed. Rain has poured in and all the furniture is broken. It smells of mold and moisture. Floor is rotten. The house has a kitchen and a, and a bedroom. And there is one thing that is remaining here that hasn't been destroyed. There's a there's a chest. And Elise is looking at it, trying to get it open, but it's stuck. You remember this chest? I think so. Hmm. But I can't get it open. Uh, that's a shame. George, George, why don't you help her with this chest? Oh, very well, certainly. I again step in. At this point, I'm getting tired, irritable again, and I understand why we're here, but seeing a ruin... I mean, I'm not entirely sure this is really going to help Elise that much, but I suppose I can be polite about it. 
Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I'll open the chest. You can rely on me. I sort of pull back my sleeves a little, frowning as I check my bite. How's that looking? It's okay. It's a little bit bigger than a normal mosquito bite, but that maybe it was maybe it was some kind of wasp or something. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll ignore it and try and help open this chest. Uh, you think you might need some kind of metal to pry it open, and it's not difficult to find. I mean, this house has fallen to pieces, and, and oh, there, right? yeah, by the fireplace. Maybe if you use that one, you might be able to bend this open. Can you roll for maybe a strength roll? Because you have the fire poker, you can roll this with advantage, so uh, you get to uh, roll uh, the ten number. Uh, you get to roll it twice, and you get to take the lowest number. Well, unfortunately, even the lowest number is 55 over 35. Despite my bravado, my thin frame is struggling a little as I try and pry open this box. You're doing this in front of Christina now, and you see how she's sort of looking at what you're doing here. Do you, uh, are you going to give up, or are you going to push this? I feel a moment of embarrassment at the situation, and I think I will try and push it. What could happen if I fail? Something rather embarrassing would happen, most likely. I sort of am about to push forward a little, and then I say, I say, uh, old man, you wouldn't just give me a little bit of a hand here, could you? It'll be easier if there's more than one person doing it. Uh, sure, I I suppose. I'll, I'll try and help you as well. I uh, put my hands on the poker as well, and uh, I try to help him pry this chest open. Right. Well, then you can also roll with advantage. And uh, I rolled 20 under 30. Oh, excellent. So, describe how you open up this chest. Well, I'm not very strong, and I, I feel like I need a good grip. I need to push down without causing that muscle in my back that usually causes so much trouble when I try to lift heavy things to get in the way. So, I move around. I, I actually I, I, I push George to the other side so we can get a good grip. And this is how you do it. <coughs> and I push down and I hear a slurt creak as uh, something breaks in the locking mechanism. Yes, and the chest is open. There's old clothes inside and there's also a camera, an old camera and a photo album. Christina is immediately drawn to the camera and picks it up and begins looking at it. I send her a disapproving look, as this is obviously Elise's memories we're talking about, but I don't say anything. I, I try to uh, nod towards Elise and encourage her. And she, Elise, goes to pick up this photo album. My, 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 my dad, he, he used to take pictures. That, that was his job. And she begins opening up this photo album. Is anyone looking at the photo album with her? I stand at an uh, appropriate distance and try to look over her shoulder. What about you, Crane? I, again, have a little curious look. I am keen to distract from the fact that I was unable to open the box by myself. It seems like Christina hasn't paid it much mind. She's completely uh, engrossed now in this old camera. I mean, she, she's you know that she's very, very interested in the, the hardware of, of cameras and how they're, they're built. And she has a really technical mind. And being able to see this, this old piece of tech uh, is extremely interesting to, uh, to her. So she seems to have completely forgotten about that. So, um, yes, you don't probably have to worry that much about not having maybe lived up to, well, what you would have wanted to show in front of her. You want to impress her, right? I think I do a little. She's... Certainly my kind of gal. She is. That is true. Then, um, Jung, you're, uh, you're both looking at the pictures, and you see pictures of Elise's mother. Then you see that the picture is marked Frida. Must have been her name. Holding uh, little Elise, and there's some pictures of her parents together. There's also pictures of the village and its inhabitants around the years 1900 to 1907. One is a solitary photo taken of three fishermen with beer mugs in their hands. They pose proudly in front of a strange and deformed sea beast that they have caught. It has several mouths and eyes. What is that thing? Elise just shakes her head. I, I don't know. Sometimes they catch strange things from the sea, don't they? 
Uh, it's a bigger ocean on this side, I, I, I suppose. Yes, I suppose so. And she looks to you, Crane. I don't really say anything. I just I'm curiously looking. And uh, she continues flipping the, the pages. Uh, a second photo that stands out to you is what's well, a series of photos, really. It's a celebration at the beach. The whole village is there, dressed in their finest clothes. What looks to be a priest is raising his arms to the sky in a dramatic gesture. He's standing in the water. And out in the water, there are three indistinct figures. You can't really make out what they are, but they're quite far out into the water. What's all this? Some sort of local tradition or something? (coughs) (coughs) You hear someone clearing their throat. Um, And as you look behind you, you are... Well, shocked, I guess, would be the word. To see the priest from the photo. Now older, of course. A slightly hunchbacked man. He's wearing a worn black suit, but he's got the the little priest's collar on. Well, uh, good day. I... Dr. Rangel, Mr. Sjöval, I see you are back after all these years. Uh, Pastor... Pastor Martinson, uh, it's good to see you, uh, Mr. Cueval says. Um, I uh, take this as an acquaintance of you from last visit, perhaps? My name is Fingal Jung. Oh, he nods politely. Yes, uh, I'd honestly hoped to never have to see any of you again. Uh, is this a uh, Elise? He looks to Elise, who's dra- dressed in her flapper clothes, but uh, with the proper boots on. She she curtsies and, and smiles at him. I was just here to visit my old home. Oh, that that is fine, then. There are so many empty homes here now. I'm sorry, it tends to attract all kinds of people. And you can see him putting away a knife that he had, uh, had by his side. Can't be too careful, he, he says and smiles. Oh, I assure you, I say with a smile, we're not here to steal anything. If anything, it seems like Miss Elise has found some old keepsakes, so I suppose we'll be taking them with her, and, well, then we'll probably be off. You, would you like to have a, a parting drink at the parish house? Uh, that would not be unwelcome, um, yes, uh, but this is a trip we are taking particularly for Elise's sake, so I will leave the decision to her. Yeah, that, that could be nice. I don't say anything, but I kind of just watch Anna and Cheval. How are they reacting to this? Well, they they look a bit concerned. Obviously, they didn't have a very good interaction with the priest last time they met with him. You remember hearing as much. But it seems like... Well, it seems like it is quite far in the past. and Well, they don't seem overly worried. But uh, they're keeping an eye out. That much is clear. Well, there's nothing wrong with a little drink, I suppose, Pasta. But again, we have a bit of a journey in the evening. We weren't intending on staying, if you were worried about that. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, come, come. He um, begins to uh, lead you towards the town. Will you follow? Yes, I will. Uh, I will try to observe as well Anna's reaction and uh, stick close to her and see, make sure that everything is fine. Hmm. Does Elise pack up the photos? And I'm sorry, what else was there? There were photos. And- Christina has the camera. There was old clothes. They they were uh, didn't seem to be in particularly uh, good shape. There was a a small child's dress, like a one that's used for baptizing children, like a white one. Uh, that one she brought, um, and then she uh, brought the photo albums. So she has those with her. She's put those in her backpack now. Yeah, it's what I, I I might look around and see if there's anything here that is that could be of interest or nice to bring along that uh, Elise didn't notice. Yes, unfortunately, aside from the chest, everything seems to have been quite exposed to the elements and is in very very bad shape, rotten or or destroyed. So, what was of value here seems to have been in that chest, unless there's something else that you have missed. Yes, and I, I would use my antiquarian's eye to try and see if there were anything of value, but uh, things are not that old, I suppose. No, you do look around, and nothing in here will be of any value, and everything is way too destroyed anyways that could have had some kind of 
potential interest to someone who has well could have been of interest to someone who has uh, has has this kind of, of taste for this very countryside aesthetic. Uh, no, there's nothing mm. of value here. I sigh a little, and I say to Elise as we start leaving. Well, there you go, Elise. Hopefully, uh, you found some keepsakes. Uh, well, hopefully, this has all been a good trip for you. Yes, it's been fantastic, actually. I, I'm so happy to, to have gotten to come here again. And, and she seems like she is genuinely sort of touched. She seems quite emotional, but in a, in a good way. You know, like, like this has actually been very good for her to see these things again and to see these pictures of her parents you assume that she might not actually have had any of of those I smile feeling a little better that this trip has actually been of use to her then after all as far as I'm concerned it's all been a bit boring other than of course the grave but I suppose a little drink with a local pastor I sigh inwardly won't be the end of the world all right then, everyone. I suppose let's go for a little drink, and then I guess we'll be making our way back to the car. And he leads you through uh, to the town, and there's an unpainted church building that's uh, seen on a hill in the middle of the town. The building faces its two small towers north uh, towards the fjord, and um, around the church are about twenty low houses with grass-covered roofs. Three of the roofs have collapsed. It all looks very old-fashioned and almost abandoned. But there's a lone goat who meets you on the path and smoke coming out of a chimney in the house closest to the church that suggests that the place is at least partly inhabited. The goat bleats as you get closer to it. Gnawing the goat and trying to make some polite conversation with the pastor, I say, Oh, so um, business not so good these days? Uh, What is everyone's main job here? Fishing, I guess? Fishing? Yes, fishing. Fishing. There's not so many of us left, but we do some fishing. It's good fish in the sea. I'm sure there is. You also apparently have some very interesting local fauna as well. <laughs> you see the uh, pastor here in the in the light. Can you roll a spot hit? Sadly, that's a 97 over 50. No, you don't see anything in particular. The pastor says, "Yes, the the sea. It, it, there's there's riches in the sea, and and, and we do fish." Uh, from there sometimes but mostly of course I, I serve I serve the Lord and I take care of my little parish here uh, yes I hear a lot of people have been emigrating to America yes many many people have left there's only a few of us uh, still here in the town but we take care of it and and we we pray that's what we do here it's a simple life but it's a good life and uh, he he um, leads you to the farmhouse next to the church. It's in slightly better condition than the neighbors' uh, houses. Nets are hung to dry outside and there's smoke coming out the chimney. He leads you inside and the house consists of two uh, rooms. It's simply furnished with unpainted rough wooden furniture and it feels very very humble. Inside is uh, the pastor's wife. Uh, She's a skinny and short woman wearing simple clothes and a kerchief that's covering her hair. Um, she has some rather striking deformities in her skin. Crane, you're, you're, you're sure that they're, they're shifting in purple and yellow? I do my best to not look at the woman. Uh, it's rude to stare at such things. I will try and just look elsewhere, finding somewhere to sit maybe, as I say. Well, uh, lovely church you have here. Thank you. Uh, and she points for you to, to sit down on a, on a wooden daybed sofa by the dining table and uh, comes out with some worn animal mugs and, and starts pouring up uh, a bottle of clear liquor. I will take a sip. How's it taste? Strong. Ooh. I say, this is some strong stuff. Put hairs on your chest. <laughs> oh, yeah, enjoy. Um, and the pastor... Uh, speaks to you. So, um, what is it really that brings you here? Is it just, just Elise? Is that, is that it? There's nothing else? Well, what else would there be? No, on the contrary, um, <clears throat> and I kind of stop looking then to Anna or Cheval, or even Young to continue. I suddenly think it's probably not my place to be saying things. No, it's, um, what he, he says, it's mostly for Elise's sake, and, uh, 
Then, of course, we were curious about the uh, old grave, and uh, I see that, uh, or they tell me here, my my friends, Anna and uh, Mr. Cheval, that uh, there has been a change since last they were here. Christ and Mary, they, they change things, you know? Do you know anything about the, the people that came to to plunder the place after the uh, first visit of the archaeologist? Oh, uh, no. No. No? No. As the conversation gets awkward, you see me just look at you, young, sort of like smiling, but also raising an eyebrow slightly at the manner of questioning you're undertaking. Well, I, uh, you can see me looking uh, a little bit tired, probably after a day of traveling and walking and uh, not paying too much mind to what I'm saying, but I think it's all a bit, it's, it's too many strange things going on here, and and the, the thing that they pulled from the water and now it's all deserted and he doesn't want to say anything, so why do you, why do you ask? What what else would we be here for? Yeah, I just I just want I just want to know why why you're here. You know, if, if there's any risk that you're going to come back, because it, it's best if you don't, and it, it's actually best if if you drink up and and if you if you leave. <laughs> Believe us, we are uh, we are not keen to stay longer than we must. But you must understand that uh, young Elise here uh, has some valuable childhood memories. Positive ones, she just told us, that she used to play and uh, it uh, surely can't harm that we just let her uh, re-experience that. Oh, of course not. She belongs to the congregation. Uh, even if she's grown up uh, elsewhere, she, she is one of us. She's one of the people, one of Christ and Mary's people. One thing I would like to ask about, what is this, uh, there was a photo here of, of you, I believe, I, striking resemblance and uh, something, some people moving far out into the sea. Well, we, of course, we were, we were giving our offerings to, to Christ and Mary. They, they live in the sea and in the dreams of men. Christ and Mary live in the sea? Have you not read the Bible? Nothing that I remember. Where is this passage exactly? Would you mind pointing it you out? Had, perhaps? You had better read it again. I, I'm sorry. It's not. I don't have one here. He says you do not have a Bible. Well, you've finished drinking up now, haven't you? Um, you, you really should start to go now before something unpleasant happens. And he looks to um, Elise. But before, before they go, Elise, I, I have something important to give to you. You, you, you must have it, you see. I take a step forward and I put a hand on her shoulder and I I want to give a feeling of protecting her. I'm a little bit worried. He's had a knife out before. I don't, I don't feel completely safe with what's happening. You see now that he has a golden medallion around his neck and he takes it out from underneath his clothes and, and he hands it to her and she takes it in her hand. Elise, it will protect you from evil. And you see that it's covered in linear A font, the same as one of those items that are being exhibited. No harm in that, I think, to myself. At least you, you're always welcome back here. Remember that. But the rest of you, I, I hope, I hope you don't come back. We, we don't need outsiders here. Oh, well, that's all perfectly understood. I get up and try and offer a disarming smile, as I say. Thank you very much for your time, Pastor. It's been wonderful to sample the local culture. Uh, we'll be on our way now. We've got a train to catch. And he just kind of grunts, and oh, Christ and Mary be with you. And he, uh, you, you feel uh, the, the, the alcohol. It's, it's warmed you up nicely. It, it definitely gave you some hairs on your chest. And I look to Mr. Young and the others and Christina and I just start making my way out. I'm quite keen to get out of here. I don't know whether to be amused or worried about Mr. Young's questioning. Uh, on one hand, I admire his guts, but uh, on the other hand, I'm not 
sure that was the right way to go. I recall what Anna said before about there being a possibility of violence from these people, and they definitely, definitely are the exact definition of strange locals with weird customs. So I sort of just make my way out. Yes, uh, I will uh, keep uh, having that protective uh, uh, stance around Elise. I... Uh, I'm happy to leave as well. I'm feeling a bit tired from everything. It'd be nice to go back and seeing Crane, enjoying the liquor. I give a shake of my head. And uh, yes, you you all begin leaving the pastor's uh, home. It is starting to get a little bit uh, a little bit darker now. There's still a few hours left of, of daylight. Um, can I just go and see the Gulmarn b- before we leave? Elise says, just see the, the sea. And, and Anna looks to you, uh, uh, to you, Jung. She did mention that before. Do you recognize it from your dreams now? I, I do. I do. Well, then perhaps we should... Uh, that will give you the final closure if you see that place that you have seen in your dreams. Well, I mean, can't we see it from the car? After all, I lower my voice a little. Uh, you heard what the pastor said. Uh, Miss Anna, I... Honestly, believe you were right. I have a feeling if we don't leave soon, maybe a few of the locals, I don't know, are going to have a few drinks down the pub and show us outsiders what for. You know what I mean? Maybe it's better we don't antagonize these people. Surely you've seen enough of these. Come now, Mr. Craig. We've we've come here for this. It is one final look at the sea, and that'll be that. Ugh. Well, at least let me see that uh, medallion he gave you, Elise. Oh, sure. She, uh... Hands the medallion over to you. And yeah, it looks very much like the um, medallion in the exhibition. It uh, mm. reminds you of Minoan uh, artifacts, of course. It is the same style. It's in very good shape for possibly being very old, unless it's been made recently in the same style. I say very cl- quietly to Young, does it seem to you a little strange that one of the things currently in the collection is here in the possession of a pastor. Did you not think it interesting how he reacted to your questions about things being stolen? Hmm? I thought many things were quite interesting about that pastor not having a Bible. I'm sure, you know, they have been digging things up here and around the place so the pastor would have access to Graves? Maybe the grave isn't the only place where these things have been found. And I have no doubt whatsoever that the people robbing the place were the people in the village. They seem quite obsessed with keeping it their own. Exactly. My fault's exactly, old man. So maybe we best tread a little carefully. Still interesting. Very well then, Elise. It's yours. Uh, All right then, let's quickly go to the sea. You can have a look and then let's get going. I'm... Not liking this place at all anymore. Something's off. You start walking towards towards the sea. It is, after all, right by the the sea. This village it doesn't take you long to get there, and uh, it's you see out into the the horizon, and, and you see how the the sun is uh, setting fairly soon, and the the water is glistening and. Before you're really sure what's happened, you see that uh, Elise is out in the water and she's undressed. She's walked naked into the water. It must be very cold. Elise, Elise, what are you doing? Wait. I look to Anna. Anna just shakes her head. Uh, Cheval, uh, uh, look, help me get her out of there. But Elise, uh, not the time for swimming. And I'm trying to avert my gaze a little. That's suddenly a young lady just disrobing. She's uh, swam out quite a bit now. You see, there's a ship out there. It's quite far out, but yes, a ship. This, uh, are you sure, considering her condition, it's it's a good thing to let her go out there and swim? She's gone. Elise? And Anna begins screaming, Elise, where, where did you go? Elise! Elise! What do you do? I look a little... I look to Cheval. What's he doing? I'm giving him a look of like... You're just standing there, man! And he just looks back at you. Uh, like like he's also just stuck not really knowing what to do. 
obviously not wanting to run out into the freezing water. I look to everyone and feel a moment of apprehension. I'm not a good swimmer. Christina looks to you to do something. George! George! I start quickly taking off as much clothing as I possibly can while still retaining some element of modesty, and I try and start wading forwards as quickly as I can. And you do. How far out do you go? You don't see her. (sighs) I try and go as far as possible before I actually start treading water, and then I just start calling out from where I am, Elise! Elise! There's no answer. I try and just duck my head under the water, just for a moment. I can see anything in this dark, gloomy sea. It's dark. It's very dark. And then you hear the sound of someone coming out of the water, and and it's Elise. And she sort of shakes her hair to get the, the, the water uh, out and uh, trying to cover herself as she rushes towards the uh, towards the beach. I, I go to get her clothes and, and to, to sort of start handing them over without l- looking. You do that and you, uh, you help her to, uh, to, uh, to cover herself up. And um, she, uh, she moves off a little bit to, to, to get dressed. What came over you? Why, why, you why, why, why did you do that? The dreams. I've seen what I needed to see now. It was there. What was there? What I saw in my dreams. I come out quite irritated and uh, I'm, I'm trying to I'm, dress myself. I'm sorry, I'm sorry George. Wet. I'm sorry. I should have, I should have told you what I was doing. I'm sorry. Are you all right? I'm fine, Elise. But yes, you should have. I'm sorry, but you should have. That was completely. I try and stop myself saying the word mad, but it's clear that that's what I was about to say. I uh, I pat your shoulder, uh, George. You did did right. Uh, You did right. Uh, I I hate to, um, well, uh, to to, to, to stop this little swimming um, exercise that we're having here, but I I think we had better start moving back now, Leonard says. It it is getting dark, and I think if we don't leave right now, we're not going to be making it back to the car before uh, darkness has completely fallen. I nod in agreement, but again, I'm a bit frustrated, I'm embarrassed and annoyed that I had to dive into the sea. I'm cold now. Christina comes uh, up with uh, with your clothes uh, to you. I knew you were going to save her. And she, she looks to you and smiles. I feel a different emotion come over me quite quickly, as I say. It's what anyone would have done, right, Christina? I just, I can't believe she did that. It was so, ugh. But she's fine. That was the point. She's fine. Let, let's get back to the car and let's get somewhere else. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's. And she uh, again begins studying her, the, the camera that she, she picked up. Uh, and, and she loses herself in that. As you start making your uh, way back to where you left the car, which is about half an hour walk uh, from here. And darkness falls quicker than you would have thought. You're following the forest path now with only faint moonlight guiding you. It should be here, right? It's somewhere around here, right? Leonard says. Mm, yes, um, we should have we should have arrived at it already. I, I think. No, we we didn't go there. Maybe we should turn back a bit. Maybe we took a wrong turn. Maybe, maybe. No, but I'm, I'm sure. And as he says that, you see on the path ahead of you. Four shapes. Large men. They're quiet. What do you do? Um, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, gentlemen. We have you seen a, a car standing around here? No answer. Hello. I feel. Uh, I feel very nervous. I uh, don't like this at all. I feel. Most uncomfortable. I hold Anna close to me, pretending to be comforting her, but probably being as much comforted by her. I step forward, quickly borrowing the lantern, and just sort of shine the lantern in their direction, saying, 
Now, now, we don't want any trouble. We're literally looking for our car on our way out of this lovely place. And Elise speaks. Let us pass. And, and, and she holds up the medallion. You will let us pass. And as she does that, the men, the two in the middle, they move a little aside. And there's a path between them that you can pass by. They're not blocking the road anymore, but they're still standing there. I begin moving forward, and I shine the lantern on these men. I want them out of the darkness. Who are these people? You shine your light on them, and you're getting closer now, I suppose, if you want to actually see more than just these large shapes. Are you trying to pass them by? Yes. As you get closer, you see that they're very pale. And when you breathe out, your breaths are visible in the cold air. But not these men. There's no breaths coming from them. And they just stand there quietly, allowing you to pass them by. I move my lantern away from them after a few seconds and get back to the road, lighting the way. Come on, Cheval, maybe just a little further. Uh, yeah, maybe further, uh. I was pretty sure we should have turned back there, but uh, I just feel very unsettled by this experience, uh, and I I try to give Elise a look. She looks absolutely terrified. All right, uh, there, there, that's the car, right over there, and it is indeed the car. It is your car. Oh. Huh. <sighs> thank God thank God and Christ and Mary and I make my way to the car lighting it for everyone putting the lantern down and then opening the doors so that the ladies can all get in first like oh well there you go a bit of a bit of an adventure eh in the dark but don't worry everyone uh, here's the car that we can we can get on our way did you know that was going to work uh, Elise I had no idea, but it did. I'm glad, she says and smiles. Hmm. Oh, well, I can't wait to be on our way back home and and see Stockholm again. Be back in the city and I'm at least, I mean, you got what you felt you came for. You you said you saw something there under the, the sea in the, the water. Yes, I, I did. She doesn't really say much more on that topic other than that she saw what she saw in her dream and and that she feels content now, having seen her home as well. Hmm. Well, I retain a bit of curiosity, but uh, we came to ease her mind, and if that is done, then maybe it's all good. I move into the car as uh, Christina goes in, and I go to sit next to her, saying, Well, Miss Linda, I hope that was a uh, <laughs> uh, bit of excitement for you. <laughs> Good photos and mysterious uh, people. <laughs> she uh, laughs nervously. I'm really glad we left that place behind. It's going to be great to be back in Stockholm. Oh, yes, yes. I, I, I'll treat you to... to uh, next dinner is on me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Anna whispers to you, uh, Fingal, Those men... I recognize them. They're the police officers. The missing police officers. And you get back to Stockholm. And it is night, Crane. And you are... Your wound is itching as you're sleeping. And you dream. You dream that night... A glorious dream. A towering man stands in front of you. He has a bull's head, and he's wearing a dress uniform. Swirling lights surround him, and he's speaking directly to you. Come, come, I will lead you to honor. I will lead you to death. Kneel before your king. And I want you to roll a hard pow. 
two under 20. I feel for a moment that I'm going to, but then I don't. This being so wondrous, slightly unnerving, but it's all just a dream, so I'm filled suddenly with a bravado, the bravado of youth. The, the towering figure, it fills your entire view now. It is only centimeters away from your face. You refuse the Shining King. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the King's Haven Minotaur for Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. This adventure was written by our friends Gunilla Jonsson and Mikael Pedersen for the Swedish edition of Call of Cthulhu that is published by the fantastic folks at Elusive Publishing. The music is from the Cthulhu, Njarlathotep, Yogsothoth, Shubnigarath, and Asatoth compilations by our friends at Cryochamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more game music for your table. We've also used the official soundtrack for the Swedish version of Call of Cthulhu, composed by none other than our friend Andreas Lundström from Sweden Rolls. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Horschelbear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, and David Hogbay for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cultivated Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. And remember, that is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even death may die.